I looked around us, several couples had completed the task and we waded into the sea to wash Scarlet's sticky skin free the chocolate. A few pairs overtook us as we walked onto to the beach, beaming. In the back of my mind, I wondered about my fiancé. She had complained and moaned about every annual break with my friends, demanding that we grow up and invest the money in something less juvenile. But, I earned a good salary and I paid for my jaunt with my income. We didn't share a flat and that most of our wedding fund had come from me. My dissatisfaction with her constant demands negated much of the guilt I felt. Perhaps my relationship was in its death throes, or maybe it was salvageable and this was the sort of conflict which we would navigate to ensure it would become stronger. I didn't know, but as I stepped through the sand, hand in hand with the 21-year-old graduate, who oozed the same playfulness and energy as I did, I knew my life had to change. Two men from the boat pulled a dinghy through the water, and they provided a feast for the individuals from the ship's kitchen. Sandwiches, burgers, hot dogs, pizzas, sausages and vegetables. The captain gave wristbands to half a dozen couples. They'd won the various games he played and that meant they were entitled to a t-shirt at the end of the cruise. But what about us? We can't walk from the jetty to the hotel naked. A woman asked. The captain grinned. We may hand out bonus wristbands for the most daring of couples. Entertain the group and you'll get a t-shirt at the end of the trip. Like singing? No stupid. He means you know what. Her friend shouted, to a roar of laughter from her group. Y'all be fine. You're always spending night in the nightclub. Just have fun like ya normally do. Shut up. She squealed in her common drawl. Scarlet grinned at me. So, lose your dignity here, or lose it when we get back to the hotel. I hummed. Or both. There's no guarantee that they'll give you a t-shirt or that it would cover everything. Just entertain us people, the captain replied, handing out more bottles of beer to the assembled group. There are a lot of thing if you need them on the table. The first couple did not require it, Barry scored himself you know what from his partner, and I put my arm around Scarlet as we watched the fun develop. Her sister was enjoying with her fellow, do you want to do something? I asked, that can't be good if she's marrying soon. A mischievous grin emerged on Scarlet's lips. She's been doing it all weekend. My sister has an open relationship. They want to marry with her carrying another man's baby and they've been trying for months. Oh, wow, yeah. Scarlet chuckled and pointed to the woman in her early 40s, she was on the sand with my roommate. That's Auntie Harriet, married, divorced, which is why she's come. She wants to bag herself some fun. My hands slid over Scarlet's torso. In the distance, a few of the revelers walked away from the fun because they didn't want to partake in the sordid games or desired somewhere more private at the back of the secluded beach. Scarlet smiled as she looked into my eyes. I wanted her. She rolled onto me, pressing her lips against mine. Beer, fruity rockija, pizza and sausages on her breath. Passion in her eyes. Her body pressed mine onto the beach, my hands gripped her. We broke our kiss. Shall we? No. I'm not doing this here. She whispered. Sand gets everywhere. She made eye contact with me. The strong sun and warmth gave a freedom, but I could not remember the last time I had fun that was this good. My toes curled. Scarlet was enjoying spending time with me. Thanks. That was incredible. We watched the show over a bottle of beer, but saw that the captain and his colleagues were quietly packing away. On the return journey there were more sordid activities, but I stayed with Scarlet, watching the inebriated party animals. The captain handed a dozen short-length t-shirts to those with wristbands. They didn't even cover the torso to the waist, and we docked in the mid-afternoon, with all the attendees tipsy or drunk, and either bottomless or naked. We retrieved our possessions from the lockers and stepped onto the wooden pier. When's the next party? Scarlet's sister asked the captain. He smiled. Tuesday. But you have to buy a new ticket. It wasn't as if we could reuse the swimming costumes. Instead, I took my partner's hand and led her from the jetty. A few wolf whistles became a torrent of cries, shouts and exclamations as dozens of men and women walked from the private harbor, through the swimming pool complex, to the foyer. Hundreds of hotel guests, sunbathing and swimming, did not expect to see so much. I escorted Scarlet to her third-floor bedroom, and she wrapped her arm around my body, kissing me on the lips. If you want to finish what we started on the beach, in the privacy of my room, she offered, swiping her keycard in the lock. Aren't you sharing with someone? Yeah, my sister. She grinned as she stepped inside. It took me all of a microsecond to join her. She was only my for a few hours, whilst we played some silly, drunken games, 
but I had had a better time with Scarlett than I had ever had with my fiancé. She beamed at me as I scooped her in my arms and landed with her on the single bed. First one, then two. She loved playing cars with me, she kissed me as the afternoon sun streamed through the open window. A couple were also playing the cards on the balcony beside us, and there were excited cries and shrieks from the pool below. We don't have sand. W can finally play some games now. All in good time, I whispered. I moved to the foot of the bed, admiring her. I kissed her, pure deliciousness. Maybe poker? I panted. I want to play poker now. She agreed and rolled onto her stomach. We started playing poker. Every game was an overwhelming ride of wonder, so good, so wonderful. She arched her back, the game is so interesting. She said, it was the best poker I'd had for years. Scarlett had an amazing skill in poker that my previous partners had never had. I played with her, feeling how she likes playing poker. The end of the game was near. She gestured for me to cuddle her, and we lay together with the remnants of our poker game. That was incredible, I said. The game was incredible. SSSSHHH. Scarlet hissed. Don't spoil it, as we lay cramped on the single bed, hugging tightly. Scarlet's sister returned, with two men and we hurriedly parted, agreeing to meet at the pool. I washed and dressed and met her on the sun terrace. We drank cocktails, chatting warmly and friendly. Just friends and I explained my worries about my fiancé. She listened, but wouldn't offer her opinion. I like you, so taking advice from me would be like Manchester City asking Manchester United about Liverpool. She sighed, but you're not happy, so if I were you I'd find a way to fix my relationship or move on. It was a fair comment, and I loved spending time with her. The young graduate and I spent most of the evenings together until she left on Wednesday with her sister in the hen party. We were together every day, but explored some of Croatia outside the hotel together, are sharing desserts like love-struck teenagers in a cafe. I returned home on the Thursday and split with my fiancé that week. Our relationship had run its course, and my decision did not hurt or upset her. She felt the same, but for me, Scarlett had shown me everything I wanted in a woman, and it was a world apart from what I had. Scarlett and I communicated daily, trading photographs and messages. She loved sending images and always expected something in return. Two weeks later, the wedding of Scarlett's sister occurred at a stately home 70 miles from my North London flat. I bagged an invitation for the evening reception and attended, I hoped Scarlett would let me remove that in the privacy of her hotel room. She saw me and hurried over. Good tux, she whispered. Damn good dress. Have you seen the Daily Star today? She asked. My brow furrowed as she mentioned the sensationalist tabloid newspaper. She reached for her phone in her bag and loaded an article, due to go to print the following day. Bonking Beach Brits slam sordid show scam. What? I squealed. Those black pillars were 360-degree cameras and microphones, she explained as I scan read the story. The organizers filmed the parties all summer and have a website called Drunk Beach Parties, registered in Panama. A few people have found it being launched and kicked up a stink because they didn't know they were being filmed for the internet. But that's illegal, they don't have our consent. They had signed agreements, and it's not like we have a recourse in Panama, she replied, and held my hand. She scrolled a little further on her phone until it reached a photo of her sister, the bride, enjoying herself. Despite the pixelation on small parts of the photograph, it was obvious what activities the attendees were engaged in. They went that Tuesday, when we went go-kart racing. She and Andy went on their own. She paused. At least the groom can subscribe to the site to watch his new wife. She told me that they are into that stuff. I knew it was too cheap. If something's too good to be true, it is and half of my friends are married. This is proof of their infidelity. And you were in a relationship, too. You know we split the moment I got back. I couldn't be with her after I met you. You're too perfect. She gave me a coy smile and glanced towards the room. After the first dance, do you want to remind yourself how we played poker? Heck yes. Very much so. Make sure to like this video 